Howdy, y'all! I'm Rissy, and I review things. Specifically, 38 lip masks pitted against each other in Mortal Kombat! <laughs> and, uh, giving away the winning product to a lucky viewer. We'll be counting down from worst to best, and I think the results will really surprise you. For more info on lip masks and lip care in general, watch the video that I posted yesterday. But to sum up, lip masks are a really big deal right now, thanks in no small part to the wild success in Western markets of the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, which a lot of you are probably familiar with. I live in a very cold, dry place, so I actually use lip masks day and night and I wanted to find the absolute best. Now, what am I actually looking for in a lip mask? I guess it's time to talk about the rules. So, first off, nothing that comes in stick form. I absolutely do not count it as a lip mask if it comes in a tube that you have to, you know, swipe across your lips, mostly because those products are either always extremely drying on my skin and they tug and they can exacerbate problems with chapped lips, or if they're nice and soft and melty, then they're actually way too soft and they melt at human body temperature and thus become useless. So to count as a lip mask, it has to either come in a squeezy tube or a little pot. I'm evaluating these lip masks not only on how well they can kind of moisturize and protect my lips from transepidermal water loss overnight, but also on how they hydrate and plump the lips, how they heal and soothe dry and chapped lips, how they look under makeup, how they smell, how they feel on the lips, and of course the cost. Now I'm basing that on price per gram rather than price per ounce, since almost none of these come with a full ounce of product. And that brings me to the subject of tiebreakers. If two products work equally well, then the cheaper one always wins. I'm out here to save you some dollars. And on the subject of fragrance, so fragrance is never good for your skin. It is a ticking time bomb at best that can cause sensitivities and allergies down the road, but I totally get that when you're putting something on your lips, it is right under your nose and right in front of your mouth and can get in there, so it needs to either smell like nothing or smell good but not so good that you want to eat it. Uh, more about that later. Uh, so yeah, it's important to make at least some allowances for fragrance in lip products. Essential oils, though, are always bad. Not only can they be extremely irritating, cause allergies, and be skin sensitizing, citrus essential oils can be sun sensitizing for up to four days after wearing them. So they're extremely bad and will always cost a product points for me. Final note, I purchased all of these products with my own money. None of this is sponsored, none of this was sent in PR. And uh, unlike some other YouTubers who've done big head-to-head -head combat style lip mask reviews, I actually have tested every single one of these on my very own lips rather than just reading off a list of ingredients and making assumptions about how they work. I've tested and in some cases actually retested these. So with all of that said, and all the provisos and disclaimers, let the battle begin! Coming in at number 38, a war crime in lip mask form, we have the Elizabeth Arden 8 Hour Cream Intensive Lip Repair Balm. This stuff is so freaking horrible, it should be put on trial at The Hague. Oh my god. Uh, first of all, it's really expensive. One of the most expensive products on the list. You don't get all that much, and uh... I'm afraid. <laughs> like, uh, the first time I used this product, uh, so I opened it up and several things happened at the exact same time. I dig my finger in, but the act of simply opening it has triggered the release of one of the most horrible fragrances, like a mummy's curse boiling out of an open sarcophagus. So I put my finger in and I smear it on my lips. The fragrance manages to get into my nose and mouth at the exact same time, and then my eyes. The product itself starts burning on my lips, not tingling, but actually burning. And then I start coughing and hacking and sneezing, and my eyes start watering. I am stumbling around my bathroom blind, desperate to get this stuff off of me any way I can. This is terrible. I don't know who would actually enjoy this product. The smell is like old man aftershave? Like, who would want that on their lips? Blech. And uh, to make matters worse, it's got menthol in it, which was probably the source of the burning, that and the fragrance. Menthol is not good for your lips. It can temporarily make pain less of an issue, but it does so by irritating your skin in a way that your body focuses on that rather than on the previous pain you were experiencing. Utter, total, and complete 
fail. This is garbaggio. Very expensive garbage at that. Blah. Number 37, the Burt's Bees Overnight Intensive Lip Treatment. Uh, this was very similar to the 8-hour cream in that as soon as I put it on my lips, it started burning. Uh, it's got both peppermint essential oil, an irritant, and also menthol in it. Um, at least it didn't make me blind. There's that, at least. Carmex Classic Lip Balm. There's this joke that goes around every so often about how Carmex is somehow addictive to your lips and it's because it dries them out. It's not actually because it dries your lips out. It's because it irritates your lips. It's got menthol and camphor in it, which is how it claims to be medicated. And here's the thing, menthol and camphor are medications from the time when the only other medications that you had available were laudanum, moonshine, and intensive head trauma. This It's not really medicated in the way that will actually help you. So that's why like if you start using this and you feel the need to keep doing it, it's because your lips are incredibly irritated. I didn't like it when I was younger and I definitely don't like it now. It took about oh three hours for it to start seriously irritating my lips, after which I gratefully abandoned it. Screw this shit forever. The Dr. Jart Ceramidin Lip Pair. I had such high hopes for this. It's full of ceramides. Dr. Jard is a brand that everybody seems to love. It's a Korean rather than a Western product. Um, but uh, I also forgot that Dr. Jart loves putting in every single essential oil on the planet into this. I think it lasted like four days before I started to feel like I was being stabbed by sewing needles like all over the top of my lips. Yeah, this is awful. It's also expensive, so do not waste your money on this. There are way better ways to get ceramides onto your lips, as we will discuss later. The Farsali Unicorn Antioxidant Lip Mask. First of all, the name is kind of disturbing. Is it made for unicorns? Is it made out of unicorns? I don't know, and I don't think I really want to. So first off, this is the smallest lip mask. The packaging makes it look like you get a lot of product in here, but it's actually this kind of like fishbowl plastic design that makes it look like there's a lot more in there than there actually is. This is actually the most expensive product price per gram of any of these, and it is absolutely one of the shittiest. This stuff, like, so it smells absolutely amazing. It smells like those really good sugar cookies they put in grocery stores around Valentine's Day. Yeah, it smells like that. And that is a serious problem. I should not want to eat my own mouth. This smells so good, it's distracting. And then there's its actual performance. So it goes on and it doesn't feel too bad, but it isn't really deeply moisturizing. It doesn't do too much more than just sort of slide around your lips. And then it started causing large chunks of my skin to flake off in like weirdly crystallized form. Yeah, uh, this is gross and I definitely do not recommend it and I sure hope that it's not actually made out of unicorns but because by putting it on I would become Lord Voldemort. Shit. The Bite Beauty Agave Plus Nighttime Lip Therapy. I am utterly befuddled as to the purpose of this product. So Bite Beauty already had their agave lip mask, the one that comes in a tube, which we'll be reviewing in a bit. Um, so why did they make this version in the tub that's just for overnight purposes? Because this is a vastly inferior product. I don't think they've reformulated this one because it was already vegan and it's just utter crap. Um, like I spread it on my lips and over a few hours I could see my lips were actually drying out under this stuff that had completely and totally failed to absorb. Yeah, this is terrible and kind of expensive and there's no reason for it. Bye! The Petite Fay Oil Blossom Lip Mask in Camellia Seed Oil. So this was clearly created to be a dupe of the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, like the color, the packaging, and the fact that it is primarily a shea butter and micro crystalline wax based lip mask. The problem with this is, as um, it is the highest ranked of the worst because it took me about two weeks to notice that it was really drying out my lips. Like no matter how much of this I would glop on when I went to bed, my lips would be like dry and shriveled the next morning. Uh, and I know I'm not the only person this happened to because I went looking for reviews of it on Reddit and several people described the exact same experience. So that while this is cheaper than the Laneige Sleep Mask, do not be fooled. It's very, very bad. 
Number 31, the Nux Rêve de Mille Honey Lip Balm. I think Rêve de Mille is French for sweet dreams. Um, anyway, this is another like wax and shea butter based uh, lip mask that is supposed to be like honey based, but the honey is way, way down on the ingredients list. And uh, it's also got like every essential oil uh, known to man in there. I find it like sort of mildly irritating, but more importantly, the texture is, it's weird and, and grainy. Like it feels really gross when you're trying to rub it on the lips and it, it never really properly absorbed. So it was like, like sticking my lips together. It's really gross. It's a little bit expensive and yeah, absolute yuck. Mamond Plum Blossom Lip Sleeping Mask. Man, this packaging is beautiful, but it belies its hateful nature on the inside. So my main problem with Mamond as a brand is that they incorporate this horrible cloying floral scent into every single product that they make. There is nothing that they have this is, that is fragrance free and it includes this stuff. I think the product itself is actually like pretty good in terms of its moisturizing capability and like protecting your lips overnight and even helping sort of gently exfoliate. But I've never been able to use it overnight because the horrible smell of like a million different little old ladies wearing that awful rose and violet scented perfume have been ground down and mixed into here. Like it, it gets into your mouth and like coats everything with gl gross floral fragrance. I cannot stand this stuff. It is bad, bad, bad. Vermont's original bag balm. I hate the name. I hate everything about this product. So I think it actually does work pretty well as like moisturizing and protecting. Apparently this was made for like farmers in Vermont, specifically like dairy farmers to go on the udders of their cows. Hence the name bag balm. Why any human being would want to put that on themselves. I got some balm for your bags. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, so I really hate the aesthetic and the overall feel of this product. But the thing that really damns it is the fact that it contains, what is the name of the stuff? <clears throat> Eight hydroxyquinoline sulfate. This is an antimicrobial, so it's basically functioning as a preservative. There's not that many ingredients here. You've got petroleum jelly, lanolin, and paraffin wax, and also the sulfate, which um, in addition to killing off any microbes, also smells like Lucifer's butthole. Yeah, this smells like unalloyed ass. And it's one of those products that as soon as you put it on your lips, the scent creeps into your mouth in a greasy coating of devil butt stench. So uh, this product can get fucked in hell forever. Uh, also, like, just look at it. Like, it's, it's, like, gross and greasy and uh, full of these, like, little yellow bubbles. This is unwholesome or unholy. And I, I don't know why it's popular with some people. I guess maybe because it's back to the land. It's like something farmers would use. I guess if you work in an environment full of cow patties, you probably won't notice the way that it smells. But for absolutely anyone else, this is a fail. The Deer Packer Plum Seed Sleeping Lip Mask. God, this has gorgeous packaging, doesn't it? And that's basically the only good thing. Um, It's basically just kind of fancy colored Vaseline full of citrus essential oils. Yeah, it smells divine, doesn't really do very much, kind of expensive, and not good for your skin. And now we come to the products that rather being dangerous or irritating were barely adequate. Kicking it off with number 27, The Bite Agave Lip Mask. Obviously, I got this in mini version. Thank God, because this shit is expensive as hell. And it's really not worth the money. I guess maybe if you've never used a single lip mask ever before, you might think that this was good for your lips. Um, but this is the old version that had lanolin in it. And lanolin is pretty good at doing the heavy lifting of moisturizing your lips. But it's blended with a whole bunch of stuff that does a whole bunch of nothing. I even let this play the game on easy mode. I took this with me when I went back to the United States to visit my family over American Thanksgiving. And it was barely adequate in a place that is much warmer, like by 50 degrees and more humid than where I normally live. And I, I had to use a ton of this. Like this lasted like less than a week. Um, that's how just kind of meh 
it is. And now I guess they've reformulated it because it wasn't vegan. Lanolin does not require the death of animals, but it is technically an animal product, so whatever. And the thing is, is that I guarantee the new version is just going to be absolute shit. And Bite has established itself as a brand that cares way more about its image than making an effective product. <laughs> The First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Intensive Lip Balm. Uh, another just very disappointing product from a brand that I am generally disappointed by in general. It's a little on the pricey side and its ingredients list actually looked really good, but uh, the, the texture is a giveaway. It's very like stiff and dry. And when you put it on your lips, like, first of all, there's definitely, like, peppermint oil or, or peppermint fragrance in here, so it starts tingling. And tingling is never actually a good thing unless you're doing a powerful chemical exfoliating treatment on your face. Um, so it was just very mildly irritating and... It didn't, like, dry out my lips, but it didn't really protect them very well either. It, it had trouble absorbing and, yeah, just generally kind of, like, a disappointment, like... You didn't, you didn't get an A, you, you got like a C minus. You'll never get into college with those grades. Petite Fay Oil Blossom Lip Mask in the Seaberry Oil version. Now, like if this was a reality TV show, this product would have won to contrast with the other version of it just being so god awful, but this was, it was okay. You know, I, I was able to use all of it up. So that's a nice change. And, uh, you know, it got the job done. It was mildly protective. Not nearly as healing as it's marketed as being, because sea berry oil actually is used to heal burns and, and wounds. And so I thought this was gonna be like the absolute salvation for my dry chapped lips. Nah, it, yeah, it was just kind of protective and, and that was that. So not good, but not the worst thing ever either. Lana Lips 101 Ointment Multipurpose Super Balm. This is another one of these products that is just nothing but hype. Um, it's sold in Anthropology, which is a dead giveaway. Um, this, it's, it's supposedly like really fancy medical grade lanolin. And that's it. That's all there is in this. I expected better things, but yeah, it's, it's just mildly protective and that's basically all you can hope for. You'll go through it really quickly. It doesn't last very long. And yeah, like, I don't want hype. I want results. Sorry, Lana Lips. Clinique Pep Start Pout Restoring Night Mask. That's a name and a half. Uh, so this is another product that I had really high hopes for. There's no added fragrance in it, and there's a lot of, like, really rich nut butters, as well as petroleum jelly, which is such an excellent occlusive. But, like, it goes on, it starts to feel kind of nice, and then it wears off pretty quickly, and your lips feel just the way they did before you put it on. I have absolutely no idea how that happens, but it does. Um, this is the mini size, by the way, don't worry. Although the, the larger size isn't much bigger than this, so you don't get too much more product, and it's a little expensive. They have repackaged this, so you can still find it in the Pep Start packaging, but they've repackaged it as the Moisture Surge Hydro Pump Lip Treatment. I don't, I don't know why the formula is the exact same, and based on the tester at Sephora, it feels the exact same as this, but whatever. Um, it's not that great, so you don't have to worry about buying it. The Clavu Nourishing Care Lip Sleeping Pack. Um, this one won an award on SoCoGlam.com for like best lip mask. I find it very underwhelming. It has a, a light, pleasant vanilla scent and it kind of like hovers on the outside of your lips like a, like a vaguely pink tinted cloud. But that's about it. Like, not much more to it than that. It's not that protective and it doesn't really do anything extra like healing or hydrating or plumping up your lips. So, very meh. La Roche-Posay Kikaplast Lips Barrier Repairing Lip Balm. Um, I had high hopes for this one too. The La Roche-Posay uh, Kikaplast Balm B5 is really popular amongst a lot of people who are into skincare for like, healing zits and scrapes and cuts. I assumed that this was going to be the same thing, only for my lips. I was wrong. There's no Sika in it of any kind, no Centella Asiatica extract, which is a botanical that's really good at healing. Um, this is just a, an expensive little tube of nothing. Like, it goes on and, and it moisturizes, but it doesn't last very long and totally not worth it. Tony Moly, Timeless Ferment Snail Lip Treatment. 
Um, at first, I thought this was gonna be like down in the bottom with the bad products. It is a snail-based lip mask, which I was like, oh my god, so cool, it's gonna be so moisturizing! And then it wasn't. Like, it looks, I don't know, is there any left in here? It looks kind of like a, a clear jelly. Um, and, uh, like, y it, you bounce your fingers off of it and, it, and it feels really cool, but then, like, it was doing absolutely nothing for my lips until I realized you can actually get it to moisturize pretty well if you glop on, like, half a tub of it all at once. So, in theory, this could be a good product, but they need to sell it, like, in a quart-sized value version of it. Number 19. Aquaphor Healing Ointment. Ooh, man, I'm gonna piss some people off with this, but this is not that great. I really do not get the hype behind this product. I get it's cheap, it's really cheap, and you get you can get a giant tub of it. Um, it's got petroleum jelly in it, it's got lanolin in it. Well, actually, it has lanolin alcohol, which is like the cheap version of lanolin. Um, in theory, it should be good, and, and I found that it was okay. Um, but you put it on your lips and it wears off really quickly. Now I understand why people talk about, like, having to slather their lips in Aquaphor when they're living in dry conditions or when they're on Accutane, because it lasts, like, five seconds on your lips. This has no real staying power and it has kind of an icky scent that, like, sort of slithers into your mouth and makes a nest in there. So, yeah, for me, I, I don't get it. Again, maybe if you've never tried a really occlusive product before, this would seem amazing, but uh, don't worry, we've got plenty of better stuff coming up. The Aritaum Ginger Sugar Lip Mask. Okay, this is probably going to be controversial. So this product, on one hand, it's really good. Uh, it was clearly by, you know, the marketing and the ginger sugar. It's meant to be a dupe of fresh brand lip products, the, the ginger sugar lip treatments. And it more than lives up to that. I would say it actually is much more moisturizing and protective of lips than anything fresh has ever done. It smells divine and it goes on and like sort of melts into your lips and will protect them overnight and then some. Why is it down in the meh section? Well, because it has both bergamot and lime oil in it, which are the nastiest citrus essential oils when it comes to sensitizing your skin to the sun. If you put this on your lips, be warned that you will need to be really vigilant about using sun protection specifically on your lips, because bergamot and lime oil can sensitize your skin to the sun for up to four days after the last time you wore something with them in there. And lip cancer is extremely common and is, in fact, on the rise. And the molecules in citrus essential oils that cause that sun sensitization can absolutely cause malignant melanoma. So this would be such a great product if only they would just use synthetic fragrance instead of these awful citrus essential oils. <sighs> Less I. And this review has already gotten way too long, so we're gonna wrap this up and continue in part two, and don't forget, that's when the giveaway is! See you soon, y'all!